and probably have uh, read his book, Son of Hamas, and if you didn't, you, it's still on the shops and uh, more than half a million copies were already sold only in this country. Mosa was born in Ramallah, the eldest son of Sheikh Hassan Youssef, founder of Hamas in the West Bank. From the time Yusuf was young, it was expected that he would one day become a Hamas leader. He already began rising through the ranks as a teenager and was arrested by Israel in 1996. While in prison, he decided to accept a Shin Bet offer to become an informant. Beginning with his release from prison in 1997, Yusuf was considered by Shin Bet to be the most reliable Hamas source, nicknamed the Green Prince. His intelligence information exposed Hamas cells and prevented dozens of suicide bombings in Israel and saved dozens and hundreds of lives. <laughs> Yusuf moved to the United States in 2007 and after three years was finally granted political asylum in 2010. Mosul, the floor is yours for opening remarks. Um, thank you for the uh, introduction and uh, thank you for this uh, wonderful uh, opportunity. Um, as some of you know already that I am uh, not uh, politically correct. Um, and I don't believe that the politician can provide the solution, especially when the politician does not have a moral ground that they stand on. I came up with the allegory of the uh, sheep. Maybe some of you heard me uh, saying it uh, uh, somewhere else. The sheep thinks that the shepherd their best friend. The shepherd provides water, food, and creates the illusion for the sheep that it's protector. Sometimes wearing a mask, a political mask, in the West Bank, or Tunisia, or other locations, sometimes wearing an, an ideological and religious mask in Gaza or maybe other capitals of the Arab world, they have their own way to deceive the sheep and make the sheep dependent on them. But unfortunately, by the time the sheep realized that the shepherd was not their best friend, or the protector of their interest, they're already in the slaughterhouse. This is the reality of what's happening in the Middle East. Leaderships of the Palestinian people, my people, by the way, and I have the authority to say this, if they disown me, if they label me as a traitor, they can say whatever they want to say. I sacrificed a lot for the sake of Palestine, of Islam, even of Hamas. I spent 27 months in Israeli prisons. I grew up witnessing the first Palestinian Intifada, and I had no idea what was going on. As a child, I was fed with hatred that Israel was our enemy, and Israel was the source of our suffering while the Palestinian leaderships, from Yasser Arafat to Mahmoud Abbas to Abu Jihad, all of them were sitting in Tunisia, spending billions of dollars. In the meantime, they were sending children to die, throwing stones, facing Israeli soldiers. I was one of them. They used us. They sent us to the slaughterhouse. They wanted us to die. The shepherd thought, how many sheep I'm going to sacrifice today to get the attention of the world so maybe we get some more funds. So they decided to slaughter a hundred sheep 
200 sheep. Then Hamas came later on, 20 years later. And they did the same thing, using children and women as a human shield in Gaza Strip. Then we have now a new mask for the shepherd and written on it BDS to manipulate the international community, create, create chaos. They are very good at doing that. Whether you call it intifada, you create chaos. In a state of chaos, you distract everybody, and the thief knows how to find a way. Same thing now on a global scale. They are manipulating the friends of Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, the only true democracy. While the shepherd, by the way, is not legitimate anyway. You know, somebody, they sit here in this house of shame. I agree with you, uh, Mr. Daniel. I agree. <laughs> They don't represent the Palestinian people anyway. Who are you representing? The Palestinians in the West Bank or the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip? You are representing greed. Wearing the mask with what so-called Palestinian cause. You're a liar. You're a Lucifer. And at some point, you will be unmasked. If they were sincere and truthful in their approach towards peace, they would go and educate the Palestinian people, first of all, of the actual history, not their history, to compare Israel to apartheid of the uh, South uh, Africa. This is... No comparison. The state of Israel, I know terrorists when I spent time in prison who had blood on their hands of Jewish people and they had the right to go to schools and study and achieve higher degrees from Israeli schools. In Jerusalem, the Israeli government give the Muslims the right to worship on Temple Mount and in the meantime does not give the right to the Jewish people to practice their religious freedom on Temple Mount. <laughs> Israel, before BDS, which is, you know, BDS is only a continuation to what has been happening for many years since its establishment. I ask myself, a country like Indonesia or other countries thousands of miles away, Muslim countries, why are they boycotting Israel? What Israel has to do with them? But they have been unifying to delegitimize the state of Israel, not since the beginning or the establishment of BDS. BDS is just a new face. It's the new mask. I say those people need to be exposed to public. They are creating, as they created the chaos and the division within the Palestinian society, and they blamed Israel, now they are doing it on a global scale to make everybody hate Israel and to turn Israel's friends against it to turn other democracies against Israel. It's their game. They're very good at it. One of the most powerful tools to stop them, I say, stop giving them money. Instead, I'm about to conclude. Instead of empowering them against the Palestinian people, empower the Palestinian people, empower the individual against them. <laughs> create jobs, create opportunities. This is what we need. 
I'm actually very pleased to know and about this example. Those settlements that they say settlements, those are great communities and great opportunities to create and establish more industrial zones to create job opportunities for the Palestinian people. This is what they need. They need education. They need economy. They need prosperity. They need to feel safe. This is more important than all the uh, political and religious agendas uh, that their leaderships uh, wear to deceive them and deceive the rest of the world. This is from my own experience. I know that this is harsh, but in times like this, when I see the separation, when I see the division, somebody has to say something. They are not trustworthy. They are the enemies of the Palestinian people. And I'm not talking only about the Hamas extremists. Also, I'm talking about the uh, what's so-called moderate hypocrites. There are two types of Palestinian leaderships. One is terrorist, and the second is hypocrite. And the hypocrite leadership, by the way, is more dangerous, in my opinion, than the terrorists. Because the terrorists, you know how to deal with them. But the hypocrite leadership, you don't know their uh, true color. You don't know how to respond to them. I think this is enough for now. Um.